today I got my PlayStation 5. I almost said 4. I got myself a PlayStation 5 and it was only by pure luck that I was able to find one. A guy on my Discord called me and said now they have them in stock and 10 minutes later it was sold out. It has been impossible to get a hold of a PlayStation 5 and a lot of you are in the same boat, experiencing the same thing. This console has been out for freaking like two years already and it has been impossible to get a hold of one. Finally did it. I hate the design of it, but I'm gonna give you all of my first impressions on this console, whether it is worth it or not. Because boy, do I have plenty of things to say about it now that I've had it for quite a few weeks. So why did I decide to get one now? Basically I've been looking out for one since it was released but I wasn't a fan of the design but now it happened to be available for 10 minutes and I I got lucky so I bought one and it came bundled together with Horizon Forbidden West and another uh, controller almost said controller controller but I sold both of those white controllers because I am a pinky controller gamer whatever I like the color of that one so what games am I planning to play on this thing? One of the first games that I am planning on playing on it is obviously this one, Horizon Forbidden West. I'm 13 hours into the game, more on that later in the video. I am also very interested in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I haven't bought that yet, but I may actually, uh, just waiting for a sale basically. Also my backlog is but currently I am mostly playing my PlayStation 4 backlog, believe it or not. Because after unboxing this humongous monster, I transferred all of my PlayStation 4 info and games and all that stuff over to the PlayStation 5. The PS4 transfer process took almost a day, I think. I just left it on. I didn't play for the first 24 hours because of that. But other than that, uh, the transfer in itself went smoothly and I was able to use my old external hard drive from the PlayStation 4 and just tape it on this one. <laughs> in the same style that I've done for several years, you know. It's the Isha gaming style of doing things. So let's have a moment to talk about how it looks, the actual design of it. So it is a beast, it is humongous. I hate the design of it. What I hate the most is not only the size, it is the way that it is big. If this was smaller, maybe I wouldn't be so annoyed, but the thing is, it wobbles if I put it down. And it comes with a stand. The stand doesn't make sense to me. None whatsoever. It is not user friendly. Let me have that said. Not user friendly at all. I don't necessarily want to have it standing as a tower next to it. It's just too big. Not only that, but it's heavy and it's... The design doesn't make sense to me. The PlayStation 4's design. That was simple. Black and it was stackable, you know, with straight surfaces all across the entire thing. Could stack it perfectly any way that you want to have it. This, on the other hand, I also hate white. <sighs> I have ordered black faceplates, gonna install that also. And if I have it lying on the side this way, which someone on Discord pointed out that that is the wrong way to have it, I have to insert my discs upside down. So it's actually the other way around, which makes even less sense because of this curve. Whenever time comes that we are getting a PlayStation 5 slim, small, pro, just better looking in general, I'm gonna sell this thing and um, do that instead. So that is what I think about the design, basically. Now the controller, I kinda like it. I don't hate it. <laughs> I wanna say that I don't hate it. The haptic vibrations in this thing Second to none, as a console gamer would say. <laughs> Very good, feels good, but from my experience, I find this to have sort of a short battery life. So I've turned vibrations and all the things off. Feel like it charges out too quickly. Now what I don't like about the controller is that I feel like it is too big for me. Too big for my hands and I don't like the location of the analog stick, this particular analog stick. I much more prefer when the analog stick that you're using the most is up here, like Xbox is doing it. Especially when I'm playing ARPG games, where you're actually using your analog stick all around in the full range of it. So uh, not a very big fan of the controller, but I don't hate the controller, it is just fine. It's a controller. It's not such a controller, it's just a controller. So I like it, 
kind of. Now over to how the PlayStation 5 actually performs. I like everything that the system is doing. It sounds like I am being very negative towards the entire experience, but no, this is where I am enjoying my PlayStation 5. How it is performing, what it is actually doing. I'm still getting used to the user interface, which is overhauled quite a bit from what I'm used to from PlayStation 4. There are also some new features. I can actually see my play times now, and I don't believe PlayStation has ever revealed to me my hours played in my games before now. Unless the game has an in-game counter, but now I can actually see PlayStation's recordings of my playtime. And I can also stalk my friends' playtimes, which is... Uh, very cool. I didn't know that I had more than 300 hours in Fallout 4, for example. And I could see my 120 hours in Assassin's Creed Origins. The first game that I installed on this, running very nicely on the PlayStation 5, I have to say. All the digital games that I'm owning already on my PlayStation 4, I can play on this. It's a seamless transition from the PS4 to the PS5 with a transfer, all of my games work, all of that seamless, very good. I am no longer using my PS4, that is packed away somewhere now, uh, not going back, let's just say that. And the loading times of my games are improved. It's much faster, I am enjoying what it does, performs good. Now starting off when you start your PlayStation 5, you have a little game that is packed in with the console and it is called Astro Playroom for some easy trophies, I guess. And also it's just a game that introduces you to the features of the haptic feedback into controller. It's more like a demo game to show off what the console can do, I feel like. I didn't delve much into it, but I'm mentioning it either way. Now, do I recommend the PS5? It is very expensive. I paid 7,500 Norwegian. That was packed in with two controllers and Horizon Forbidden West. It is the most expensive console I have ever bought in my life. We have gotten to this point. There is a digital version also, which is a kind of less expensive. But I mean, I have too many physical PS4 games that I would not be able to play if I didn't go for the physical one. Because I'm dumping my PS4 now. Uh, I'm not going back, like I said. Now when it comes to the console war, I have no opinion on it. I am feeling maybe Xbox is leading in the console war, even though I want to like PlayStation. I have for more years been a PlayStation person than an Xbox person. But on the other hand, I like all companies. I find something good and something bad within all the three major companies, Nintendo, PlayStation and Xbox. If I'm gonna take a stand in the console war, you know my heart lies with Nintendo. But it also lies with PlayStation and Xbox, whatever. But I have to say that I'm hating that the market is spread like this because sometimes I don't know which console I'm gonna buy a specific game for. I know I wanna play Sniper Elite on the Switch because of the gyro controls. Also, bed gaming is really good with the Switch because handheld. Now on the PlayStation side, I enjoy PlayStation's way of trophies. Find them very addicting. And on the other hand, also, I feel like Xbox is the king when it comes to the feature that is Game Pass. So there are good things within all of them. That's what I have to say about the so-called console war. So now I'm going to give you my first impressions on Horizon Forbidden West. 13 hours in and I'm not enjoying it very much. It's a game. So I feel like Horizon Forbidden West has a steep learning curve, even though it is very similar to Zero Dawn. It's almost the same game. I felt several times that this is just Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm feeling nothing differently. Controls the same, combat pretty much the same. It continues the story. Story is really good, I mean. It's a post-apocalyptic world where there was a technological world before, and now we're back to caveman stage almost, with tribes and stuff. And when you go down into caves and ruins, there's old technology from the old world. That is a unique story. I, I find it interesting and I like to delve into the actual story of the game. Now, I feel like it had a rather long tutorial level. Confusing with the level designs and the world. I hate when games 
are designed in this way that you cannot see necessarily where you can go and where there is an invisible wall. And I am a person that likes to look around in every single nook and cranny within a game. And I feel like you cannot do that in this game, not in the starting areas anyway. But that is the starting areas, so you have to just get past that to open up the entire world. The game has absolutely great animations and voice acting. Very much enjoying Aloy and her facial animations. I find her very likable, very relatable. That is something I want to praise a lot in this game. The facial animations in general. However, climbing stuff feels terrible in this game. I'm falling down, I am not really understanding the climbing. And there's a lot of climbing puzzles in this game. It's a climbing puzzle game in a lot of ways. And I find it terribly frustrating. It's hard and it's confusing. And when the world opened up and I finally ended the tutorial sequence of the game, which took several hours, I think, of <laughs> feeling. Also, within the two first hours of the game, I had to look up a tutorial because I didn't get one of the climbing frustrating puzzles. But I'm not giving up on the game. I'm not sitting here telling you that it is a bad game. It's just that it had a rough start for me. I'm not giving up the game, even though I'm not necessarily finding a lot of enjoyment 13 hours into the game. There's just something with the controls. I'm not getting it. <laughs> also, you cannot fast travel out of your caves. So I'm stuck in a cave right now and I can't find the way out. It's like Black Ridge all over again. Now another game I want to give first impressions on, which I'm also enjoying more, which is also a game that I have played before. I don't know if that has anything to do with my enjoyment level of the game, but anyways, I got this game as a review code from the publisher, thank you. And I'm talking about Neptunia Reverse, which is a remake of the remake of Hyperdimension Neptunia, the first game. So technically guys. This is confusing. This is a remake of Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1, which is the remake of the first one. So technically in all ways, this is the first Neptunia game story-wise. Perfect entryway into the Neptunia series. It is where the entire story starts. So now you know. I very much enjoyed this game when I played it originally on the PC back in 2014. Also, I have it on my PS Vita. Talked about that several times. <laughs> I talk about that series too much actually, but this is a new game, so it's relevant. And and it is a PS5 game also. Now the gameplay is a turn-based RPG with a lot of good story, funny story, a lot of fort wall breaking in the story which is keeping me entertained from start to finish. I have of course completed this game before but it's fun to dip back into now and also I feel like this is a very sweet remake. Hearing the music again, meeting the characters again, I get a good feeling, I'm enjoying this game and it has a new fishing game included. <laughs> If you're ever gonna play Neptunia Reverse, I, or Rebirth, or any Neptunia actually, make sure you save often because it gets really difficult at times and when you die, you go back to last save. Also, some grinding is necessary in the Neptunia series, I feel like. Mages with a period and um, I don't think that makes verbal sense. I can't believe how- Level up! Ha! Now, another game that I've been playing on my PS5, just to check and just to see. <laughs> I had to get Genshin Impact, which is a free game, and it is running so much better this time around. Remember I said Genshin Impact was not good <laughs> on the PS4, it was lagging, it was bad. It plays excellent on the PC though. But this one on the PS5 runs very good. Now I'm dipping back into Genshin Impact also. Such a fun and beautiful game. I have made several videos on it. It was actually my game of the year in 2020, I think. Free game, play it. I mean, what? If you have the PS5. It's also free on PS4, but I don't recommend the PS4 version of that game. It is still a good game. I am playing with a lot of new characters this time around because the console versions of Genshin Impact is a separate save file from my PC save file. So it's starting over again, basically. Yeah. Yeah. 
And we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I'm trying to like still. And the loading times are so much better now on the PlayStation 5. It's no longer taking that much time with the loading screens, I mean. So that is massively improved. I am so envious when people are saying to me that they have 100 hours into Valhalla and having the best time. I wanna also, is what I'm thinking. I get really envious when people are having fun in a game that I seem to not have. It looks excellent on the PS5. I can feel that graphics are improving in PS5 compared to PS4 version. And the loading screens are just so much better now. Highly recommend if you hate long loading screen status. Now, the final verdict of my PlayStation 5 is that I am no longer using my PS4. I'm not going back. You know what, actually? I googled fan designs of a PS5 and this came up. I have to show you guys why couldn't they go with this design? That is so beautiful though. Mm -hmm. Just black, clean, stackable, slim, lying actually down in a proper way. I would love to see a PS5 like that. <laughs> So that's all my thoughts on the PS5. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below with what you think of your PS5, if you have ever gotten a hold of one, that is. Uh, which I barely did. Now listen to Disky Disk, my podcast, and join the Discord. And if you want to add me on PlayStation or the Switch, go to patreon.com slash Isha. so big, I feel like it is a joke.